Cool. Again, students, so today we're looking at movement, at joints in a revision lesson. And the resource that I've got on the screen is for you to read as well, so I'm going to scroll through it slowly. Now, we're looking at the main movements that take place in our body. The first one we look at is flexion and extension. And flexion occurs generally, our occurs on hinge joints, bone socket joints, and condyloid joints. Now, flexion and extension. Flexion is making a joint shorter. Okay, so when we make the joint shorter, or we change the angle of the joint, okay, we create flexion. So if I do it with my arm, for example, so you can see if I'm flexing my arm, okay, flexion and extension. Flexion making the angle smaller, extension making the angle longer. Good sporting example of that would be a footballer kicking the ball. So they will flex their knee, bring it back, and then they will extend their knee um, to actually kick the ball. Okay, that's the example that's been given. A couple of questions for you to try here. So identify the elbow there of the baseball player. The baseball player is flexing his elbow to create precision needed, and he will extend it on impact with the ball. Okay, next one is abduction and adduction. So go back to the top again, so we can see. So with abduction and adduction. Now, one of the ways that I remember this, okay, my most interesting way, is that when we abduct, we take away from the midline of the body. Adduction is taking it back. Madeline McCann was abducted, okay? She was taken away from her parents. So that's how I remember it, okay? Oh, that's my way of remembering it. Abduct is to take away. Abduction, take away. Adducting, bringing back in. We see this in the shoulder joint, and we see this in the hip joint, which are both ball and socket joints, okay? The next one, rotation. Now, rotation gets confused with circumduction, but the rotation is here. Rotation is the movement across, okay? It's a circular movement. Okay, like this, occurs in the shoulder, also in the hip. What rotation is good for, it allows you to put spin onto a ball. So if I'm spinning a cricket ball, I will rotate my wrist or rotate my shoulder to do that. Okay, we've got one more page of this to do. So we've got, oh, that really really comes up. There we go, come up now. Okay, the last one, so we come in and out, is, there we go, circumduction. Now, circumduction is making a cone shape. So, big circles of your shoulders, big circles of the hips. Things like swimming. Okay, when we are swimming, we are circumducting our shoulders. Okay, um, circumduction is... Um, can be confused with rotation because of the name, but the circumduction, you are making a circle. So remember that. So we're making a circle. So rotation and circumduction. The last one we need to know is plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So plantar flexion, dorsiflexion only takes place at the ankle joint. When we are plantar flexion, we are standing on our tiptoes. When we are in dorsiflexion, we are coming back down. All right, to describe this and remember this is, is that in plantar flexion, we are going up the plantas. In Spanish, plantar means floor. So we are going plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. So it only takes place in the ankle. So plantar flexion, an example would be when you jump for a rebound in basketball, your ankle will go into plantar flexion to allow that to take place. Okay, so your ankle will be in plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion, you can see in the picture, the hurdler's foot as she goes over the foot. As she goes over, okay, she was the dorsiflexion, so the toes come towards the shin. Plantar flexion, the toes go away from the shin, making the ankle bigger. And there's a little question there for you to have a go at as well. Okay, that's our original lesson finished for movement at joints.